All that and more on DXB Today. Good evening to one and all. Welcome to DXB Today. I hope you've had a lovely Tuesday thus far. Get set for what promises to be a fascinating show. Let's find out what's coming up. I check out cryotherapy from Resync at DIFC. And we caught up with Raghav while he was in Dubai for the Indie Vibes concert. Now we're very excited to be back. I know you're very excited today about today, Nimi. What's going on? Yeah, I'm so excited. I mean, it's a Tuesday night. You would think I'd be sitting at home doing nothing. Uh, but if I was not on this show, I'd be going to Trevor Noah tonight. Coca-Cola Arena, a huge headline. There's been some real build up to this, hasn't there? A lot of people. Indeed, yeah. I mean, he's, 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 he's no stranger to Dubai. He's no stranger to the UAE, I think that's mm. the best way to say. Uh, he's been a busy boy recently, what with the day job and everything like that. But now <laughs> that that's gone, a bit more time to get back onto the comedy circuit. Uh, it's good to see him back here. And it'd, it'd, be, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what sort of material he's gleaned from his time in the United States. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Faris? Anything coming up in Dubai this week that you're going to be heading to? I am so excited about all the concerts because finally some artists that I can really get behind. Coming up in just the next couple of weeks, we've got Kiss live in concert. <laughs> so some glam rock there. You're a fan of Kiss, of course. I am a fan. I'm not, I don't think I'm a dressy uppy fan, but... You're uh, not going to do the face paint? I wouldn't. Uh, no, I don't think I'd go that far. <laughs> the cat? No, no couldn't None go the full, the, 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 full, the full lot, but... I am a fan of their music. Well, if you want to rock and roll, we've also got the Foo Fighters who are coming to town. Yes, in November. They're going to be here for the F1. That'll be cool. So, Tom, will... your schedule's going to be booked out, Tom. <laughs> I don't keep saying this. You know, there's, there's, yeah, the, 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 phone's not, the phone's not ringing at the moment, so that's <laughs> for sure. Look, well, I mean, we, the headlines, obviously the, event, the, the concerts make a lot of the headlines and things like that, but lest we forget, there's so much else going on. And we're coming into a period of year, which is renowned for some of the big events. Obviously, we've got Autumn and taking mm -hmm. place at the World Trade Center at the moment. Adipec down the road, down in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and a lot of these big, Jitex just around the corner yeah. as well. I mean, just a little word of warning. I know I sound like a granddad here, but just be careful of the traffic. It's going to yeah. get busy around those <laughs> venues. And obviously, building up to the big one towards the end of the year, COP28, coming to the UAE for the very first time. Yeah, I think you need your own little traffic segment on the show. <laughs> Definitely. I've always fancied that, you know, eyes in the sky. You know, put me up in a helicopter, it'll be fine. Yeah, well, look, with this busy social life and professional life, you know, I think it's good we've got this episode in today where we're trying to make sure we take on some really solid habits to help us with our uh, discipline. And I do life. feel like October is sort of like a pre New Year's Eve resolutions. I feel like people, when they feel the weather getting better, suddenly everyone wants to, everyone wants to go hiking. They want to see more bands. They want to do stuff. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, we'll getting get any resolutions? Mm, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, to help us with our bad habits and hopefully gain some new ones, we are going to be talking to our guest co-host. But who is it? Hi, I'm Russell Hemmings. I'm an author, hypnotherapist, and life coach, and I'm really looking forward to tonight's show. Yeah, looking forward to that. Russell will be joining us a little later on. Um, uh, Russell and I, I think, sat on a similar sofa about 11, 12 years ago. So it'd be good to have him back here, that's for sure. In the meantime, though, uh, cryo chambers? Apparently they're trending these days. So uh, we, well, not all of us, but went down to Resync, a unique wellness studio that uses advanced technology to improve performance, support, ageing and weight loss. To find out a little bit more, well, we went down to check it out. Hey guys, it's Nimi here. I'm at Resync, which is a unique wellness studio right here in DIFC. And I'm gonna be experiencing one thing that everyone's talking about at the moment, a cryo chamber. Not only am I gonna be finding out more about the technology, but I'm gonna be trying it for myself. Welcome to DXB Today. Uh, Enrico, the mind behind the technology. Tell me where it all came from and where it all started. Oh, we, we started middle of 90s in Germany, so we invented the technology, electrical, whole body cryotherapy for really sick people for uh, against rheumatism, inflammatories, and we treat them well. So, and then in the middle of the 2000 years, we're going into the world. Well, this is the thing because it's been around for so long, yet now in 2023, everyone's kind of catching on. Uh, I was saying earlier, it seems like it's a bit of a trend, but there is so many deep benefits to this, Enrico. Uh, tell me more about, because it used to be an athletic, it used to be for athletes, really. Now it's changed more to the everyday human. I mean, you can tell me more. 
we help sick people in Germany beginning middle 90s yeah to to uh, uh, release the pain yeah so to recover faster so and after that middle in the 2000 so we were looking where we can use the chamber for other things so and then we're starting in the sports field in the really high level sports we're coming over to to skin therapy to well-being wellness so and now we have more than 1000 chambers in the world when do you suggest people take this treatment when is best for them what should they be feeling in order to realize they need a cryo treatment they should come really anytime so they can come in the morning just to start their day so to get that uh, mental clarity and focus for their work ahead and in such busy places uh, as Dubai you know that after a busy meeting after a hectic schedule also you want to refocus re-strategize it's the best thing it's better than any energy drink or coffee really out of my experience as well and then also uh, it's very good to recover. And tell me more about the science behind w w the technology. Yeah, it's correct. Minus 110. Yeah, but we can go deeper. Yeah, we, do, we sometimes reach minus 115. Yeah, so and uh, we have the technology to do such deep cold temperatures, electrical wise, just electricity. You don't need more. Yeah, in a short time. Well, I'm definitely in the right place then. I want to thank you both so much for your time and I cannot wait to get into that chamber. So thank you. Now, I know you're all waiting for my reaction as to how it actually went from a genuine point of view. It was just cold. That is all I have to say. I have nothing more to give, but you must try it. I think that it was a great start to my day. Faris, I think you'll definitely enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. I don't like being cold, that's why I moved here. None of us really do. <laughs> it's a big but trend it, though, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah. Ice baths are massive at the moment, cryo's massive. Mm -hmm. We're sort of craving the cold in the middle of the desert. What's going on? What's um, wrong with the sauna? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good for you. Hey, uh, and someone who is here to tell us more about what is good for us and how to really inhabit good, just examples of what you can do in your everyday life we are joined by none other than russell hemmings who is the hypnotherapist life coach and author russell welcome to the show Hi. look uh, we can we can get into what we need to be doing uh, yes. through your guidance very very soon but but tell us more about you and what it is that you do yeah sure i i'm a hypnotherapist uh, originally i've been practicing for about 35 years and one day I helped somebody to lose a, a lot of weight and it was picked up by the media, went global. And then someone in Dubai said, you need to be here. <laughs> uh, you know, the Dubai uh, stone nickel. Yep, it's yeah. a thing. <laughs> uh, and so I arrived in Dubai um, three months I had planned to stay here. And that was 12 years ago. <laughs> Wow. So it's a bit sticky Dubai, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it really is. You're in the right place, that's for sure. Um, hypnotherapy, Russ. Yep. I mean, obviously, you know, you've got so many great examples. In fact, you've got the book out at the moment as well, giving a few examples of just how uh, it can help. What's the biggest mistake people make when it comes to hypnotherapy? Um, if for those that don't fully understand it, they think, OK, there's one way I'm going to stop smoking, there's one way I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to have hypnotherapy. Yep. Is, is it as simple as that? No, and I think the perception of what people believe hypnotherapy is, mm. is distorted. And I think that's really the, the media and the, the TV, Hollywood and Bollywood, because they, they always exaggerate uh, the claims and hypno hypnosis. In fact, someone asked me this afternoon, you know, is it real? Um, yeah. Will I lose control? So the perceptions are totally wrong. And I think that's just um, past history of watching movies. So what I'd like to say and to clear that up is hypnosis is not something where you lose control. Actually, you're fully conscious mm. and we go into hypnotic states all the time. You know, when I was writing my book, I would constantly be thinking and I'd go through it and then I'd think, I haven't, I haven't been concentrating on that. I don't remember what I wrote. I go back a few pages and I'm like, oh, I did. I do remember. Mm. But I went into a, an altered state of focus concentration and that happens when you drive you know when you drive home regularly and you get home and you, you don't really know how you got there <laughs> 
the house I once, a lot. I, I once sold a house in England and uh, three weeks later, I'm driving home and I ended up on <laughs> their home, yeah. on their, at the front of their house and uh, thinking, oh my God, how did I get Knocked here? Knocked on the door, got in bed. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't, I didn't go that far. I, no, I didn't go that far, I just reversed off. <laughs> so, uh, Russell, yep. we're talking all about habits, good yep. habits, bad yep. habits. My question is, where did bad habits come from? Is it something we can blame our parents for? Like with no. most therapy, or is it something that we do? No, I think when we're born, we're born a blank slate. Uh, we acquire habits through repetition. The brain, the brain loves to not think, it wants a rest. And when we take on a habit, let's say for instance, uh, food, let's say we're stressed and we reach for some chocolate for instance, and that chocolate satisfies that stress, then that can form a habit because we're getting a result. It takes away the stress and it's, it's, shall I go into why it takes away the stress? Please. That, okay, so we, we function when we have good serotonin levels and when we're stressed, we can, our serotonin levels can go down. And what happens is if you eat carbs and sugars, they convert to glucose and actually encourage the serotonin to turn on, but only for a short while. So what ha happens is someone take a piece of chocolate, it works, it distracts them from the stress, the glucose exchange happens, they get more serotonin and they get a sugar spike, so they feel good about that, but it doesn't last. Mm. And then they continue to have the chocolate and then it runs out. And w we humans like a completion and an end to things. So having a piece of chocolate and then finishing it <laughs> is uh, also in the fit. I'm sold. Yeah, I'll have know, a piece of chocolate. I'll tell you what else us humans love, and that's a quick fix, and that's what exactly yeah. what it sounds like. But we really have to put in the work to yep. form good habits. So instead of reaching for that chocolate and that yep. sugar rush, yep. what should we be doing? Well, the, the biggest mistake that clients make um, is they, they try and change a habit, but they don't replace it with another habit. And what happens is, if you can imagine the habit as a person, Think of it as a part of you. And this, this part of you, is, it wants its job back. So if you stop smoking, for instance, and then suddenly that part that used to smoke will be nudging you. So when you're stressed, have a cigarette, make you feel better. Now, it's like anyone, if you're made redundant, even if you hate your job, you still want your job back. So you have to give that part another job. And that's the biggest mistake in habit breaking you need to replace the habit with another habit. And I found that so much easier when I was um, having biscuits with my coffee and I decided that that wasn't good for me. So I just replaced it with uh, green apples. And when you get into the habit of the green apple, then the habit that you used to have is e easily relinquished. What people do is they don't give up the habit and take another habit on. So they sit there thinking, they have, it's almost like they have a, a hole, something's missing in their life and they focus on it, and whatever you focus on, you acquire. Mm. We, we, we often talk about the bad habits, because yep. we like bad news, don't we, and things like that, we like to focus on the bad. But obviously, life, I suppose, is a balance of good habits and bad, bad, bad habits to a certain degree. I mean, can you, help, can you help promote good habits for people as a result of those bad habits or not? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, I would do that automatically. Mm. When someone comes to me with a, a habit, whether it's nail biting or smoking or whatever, then it would be wrong to just remove the habit. As I just said, you, you will feel something's missing. Yeah. So I would normally, in hypnosis, suggest a habit that I've discussed prior to hypnosis that they'd like to do. And I, f I find the gym really works. Mm. In fact, I find exercise really works in general um, to replace any habit. It's almost infectious. Once you start to exercise, for instance, um, have you noticed that your eating habits can change? Mm. What's that about? Start the exercise and other habits. Once you do one good habit, you start to take the stairs, for instance, instead of waiting for the elevator. Or you, you do something else, like the, you, know, you, you reach for the green apple, as I said earlier, mm. uh, instead of the chocolate. So one good habit can actually trigger mm. more good habits. Well, more from Russell in just a little while. He's going to stick around as our guest co-host. Looking forward to that. But after the break, more great advice coming your way. Uh, Nikita Pulwani by Niggy Marketing joining us live. Plus, our exclusive interview with Ragab. Don't you even think about going anywhere. 